stuck in a corset. Yeah. Today's new video is all about making a corset, which is the second layer in these foundation garments. Bernadette Banner has done a wonderful video on corset myths, which I will put links to, um, as well as a more detailed video on how she constructed things. Um, I did my construction a little bit different. There's nothing wrong with the different methods of construction. They're just different. Let's get making this corset. Um, I started off by hooking my computer up to my projector and projecting a image of the Symington corsets um, onto a wall that I transferred to pattern paper that we now see on my table. That's a long way to say I'm using a Symington pattern. So I started off by making all of the lines of that Symington corset pattern darker. I wanted to be able to see them clearly so that way I knew what I was cutting and what I was doing. And I wanted to true up all of the edges as well, so I used my French curve ruler to do so. But after everything was outlined better, as well as labeled to which piece it was, I went ahead and cut it out. After cutting everything out, it was time to figure out how to make this stock pattern my size. It involved a lot of math um, because you have to take whatever your measurement is and minus it by whatever the pattern measurement is and then divide it by the number of pieces so that way you can add that final number onto each of the pattern pieces. I hope that made sense. Once I had all the math figured out, I went ahead and laid everything on top of some muslin that I had and um, added the pattern adjustments to that. Mostly what I was concerned with making bigger was my hip and waist measurements. The bust seemed fine, I'm pretty squishy up there, don't mind a lot of compression. So yeah, mostly worried about the hips and the waist. Once I had made all of the pattern alterations that I had wanted, I went ahead and cut everything out and then began sewing my mock-up together. I didn't cut things out with a seam allowance, so I just ran a zigzag stitch down all of the seam lines. That way it would still hold pretty well and I wouldn't have to worry about the lack of seam allowance. The one thing that I did notice from my mock-up was that it wasn't curvy enough. And I think that's because I straightened out too many of the curves. So then I went and put all the curves back in. And it made a huge difference. A quarter inch here, an eighth of an inch there. It made all the difference. I think that is part of the reason how come people are intimidated by corsets is because little adjustments like that make that big of a difference. But really, truly, to, that's what makes it fun to me. Five eighths of a seam allowance is too much, but three eighths is perfect. Like, it's just figuring all of that out. It's the adventure of it. But like that, I've, I'm doing a thing and I'm finding it. That's that's what I enjoy about corset making. Corsets are also some of the most structured garments that we have, both historically and modern. You can build very tailored, structured, menswear inspired things, but I don't think it ever will compare to the structure that you find in a corset. Um, because, um, because a lot of the tailored, structured things um, are meant to cover your body and a corset is meant to shape your body. So whether you're shaping through tight lacing or shaping through padding, you're still shaping your body with that corset and then everything else that is tailored is meant to fit over that shape. So they serve very different roles, um, but they equate to the same gorgeous, beautiful look. I hope my rant made sense. And don't think that you have to tight lace to get a good shape of a corset. Padding is totally acceptable. So once I had made all of the adjustments, I transferred it onto the other side of the corset and then I sewed them back together for another mock-up. It 
It was after this mock-up was done that I realized I didn't need all of the room that I had put in the corset in the corset. So then I went back to my pattern and added one inch to the top of the corset because that fit my proportions better. Um, and then I just added a 3 8 seam allowance along all of the pieces. Oh my gosh, this made the biggest difference. Yeah, it just fits so well. I wear this under like modern clothes. It's so comfortable, prefer it to a bra, which is what I want in a corset. When all of the pieces were traced out with the proper seam allowance and additions, I went ahead and cut everything out. Um, and then I cut a fashion and lining layers out of a muslin. The next step was to insert the busk. So I marked out where the tab part of the busk would be. And then I sewed in between where those tabs would be, making sure to backstitch so that seam wouldn't unravel at all. And then I marked out where the knobs for the other side of the corset needed to go. And then using my awl, I poked holes, making sure not to break any of the threads to slide over the knobs. And then I used my zipper foot and sewed as close as I could to the busk. Um, then it was time to lay out all of the pieces so I knew exactly what was going where and how it all worked together. So I didn't want to bother with sewing a lining as well as a fashion layer, so I sandwiched it all together, um, pinned it really well. This made it so I only had to sew all of the layers of the corset once. If this is too many layers for you to just like pin together, you can baste things. That is a thing. I just prefer to skip that step most of the time. Once it was sewn together, I went ahead and clipped all of those edges. Then I made sure that seam was flat, secured it with pins, and top stitch over it. This gave me really strong seams as well as making sure that everything was sewn together and laying as flat as possible, which is what you want in a corset. After all of the pieces had been sewn together, I marked out where I wanted the buttonholes to be. Yes, I did buttonholes instead of handbound eyelets. There are pros and cons to both. I chose speed over everything. Then I wasn't sure if I wanted to bone my corset or not, so I sewed boning into one side so I could compare both sides of the corset. So I wanted to give you guys a quick update because I put boning on this side, but I don't have boning on this side. It's not perfect, it's still ripply, right? But it's like the silhouette is so much smoother, and especially like that hip dip right there versus like, it's not a smooth line right here. So I put boning in the other side of the corset, and then I made my own bias tape out of the muslin to finish the edges of the corset. And with that, we have a finished corset. Next week, we are starting the process of a corset cover because I don't need a lot of help in the bust department, but having that option for my own wardrobe is nice. So we're gonna make one.